Okay, so error from God's perspective based in fear. Mm-hmm. Um, and it usually begins because of something that we want to believe in. Mm. So we hold. This is our investment in well, holding more, on to it. It's and more. A, a, it's more about emotions for most of us. It's we want to believe in certain things because we emotionally can't cope with an alternative. So, you know, and this is why some people believe in God. In fact, some people believe in God because emotionally they can't cope with the alternative. That's not why I believe in God. No. But that's why some people believe in God. Some people don't believe in God because emotionally they can't cope with the alternative yes. as well. Yeah. Some people, you know, believe in all sorts of things. They believe that their wife loves them because they can't emotionally cope with the alternative. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And so a lot of the times we construct belief systems based around what we can cope with emotionally. Or what we think we can cope with emotionally. Exactly. It's not even what we can cope with emotionally. It's what we believe we can cope with emotionally, which is often also flawed. <laughs> yeah. Because God created us to cope with far more emotionally than the average person copes with. So, so the, the sad thing is that almost all of our belief systems that are personal truths are about what we can cope with emotionally or what we hope emotionally. Mm-hmm. It's got nothing to do with reality or logic. <laughs> yeah. So can we talk then about this idea that personal truth has an emotional signature? Hmm. Because that's really what you're starting to talk about now. Hmm. Um, what does that mean that it has an emotional signature? That it's something that it's painful to release if it's in error? Well, it it's might not be painful. Pleasurable. There might be pleasure associated with it as well or okay. potential pleasure. If I believe a certain thing, I feel good. If I don't believe it, I feel bad, that kind of thinking. Uh-huh. Now, I suggest that these, these are usually the underlying reasons why we have any faith in personal truth. It's because what we do is we say, I can cope emotionally with these kind of beliefs. I can't cope emotionally with these kind of beliefs. So I'm going to make out those beliefs are false yes. and make out those beliefs that I can cope with emotionally are true. Yeah. Right. So, so, for example, many Christians cannot cope emotionally with the belief that God will not come and destroy the wicked. Emotionally, they can't handle that concept even. They can't Mm -hmm. handle the concept that God is going to allow wickedness for as long as it takes for mankind to realise that they can change. And most people who are Christian cannot cope with the concept that God will allow it. Mm -hmm. God is allowing it. We have proof. Very proof. Every day we have proof that God's allowing wickedness. Every moment we have proof. It's a fundamental proof. Opposite to many of the other beliefs, it's a fundamental thing we can actually prove through personal experience that God does allow wickedness. Mm -hmm. And yet, the average Christian cannot cope with that fundamental proof. And so they hope differently. They create a belief that God is going to destroy the wicked and then they hope in that. Right? And they even sometimes revert to being God's tool of getting rid of the wicked. Yeah. In other words... Not God's real tool. Yeah. Yeah, not God's real tool, <laughs> but they believe themselves to be God's messenger of truth by destroying somebody who they believe is wicked. Yeah. So there are many people historically who are Christian who have gone to war and murdered many thousands of people just because of what they believed was the truth because they couldn't cope with the fact that that wasn't true. And this is where I feel there is a huge emotional investment. This is the emotional signature, if you like, that is within people. There's huge emotional investments in believing certain things to be true that are not. My own mother has the feeling, has the personal truth that you're a really bad guy because she can't face the reality that she's behaved badly and I've made a choice about that. Exactly. (laughs) So she's more confronted with that idea than just believing that you're a bad guy. Yeah, yeah, and people do this all the time. People do this all the time. It is a fundamental problem with humanity at the moment in terms of our lack of logic. What we are constantly doing is we are throwing out what is often facing us right in the face, right? It's right there. We can see it as clear as day, but we throw it out because we can't emotionally cope with it. And so we or don't we believe it. we tell ourselves we can't emotionally cope with That's it what because I'm God yeah. has a truth that the we tru- can. Yeah, the truth is that God created us to emotionally cope with everything, mm. but we don't believe that, yeah. of course. We believe that the pain involved with coping with it is going to be too great 
for our ability to feel it. And so we choose to not feel it and instead create an alter reality. Mm. We create a life based on imagination. We imagine something to be true that's not. Mm -hmm. and, and this happens individually. It happens in relationships. It happens in society. It happens in nations, you know, and it happens in the world constantly. The wars of this world, particularly the wars we've observed in the last hundred years, have many times been caused by the imagination of people who don't want to face a different reality. Yeah. And it's very interesting how these things have occurred. And, you know, people who got into power, such as Hitler and Stalin and these kind of people, who eventually killed millions and millions of people through their own actions, many of them got into power because of the fears of people and what they could emotionally face. <laughs> Both in, in Hitler's case in Germany and in England, you know, what they could emotionally face allowed a whole set of circumstances to occur that eventually resulted in a war mm -hmm. because they couldn't emotionally face certain things. The pain of the previous war, for example, for the German people. The, 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 the concept of, you know, if you take, you know, for the English people, the concept if you take away people's rights from them, sooner or later they rebel. And they, you know, they do all sorts of things when they rebel in harmony with their emotions, not in harmony with what's right. Yeah. And so we see that most of humanity's problems have actually been caused by, not by knowing the truth, but rather by holding on to the emotional signatures of what we believe truth to be, that it's actually error. So holding on to personal truth that's in disharmony with love has exactly. actually created all of the pain and suffering. Exactly. Yeah. If all of us individually decided to bring our lives into harmony with absolute truth, there would be no war. There would be no pain and suffering. That's even if we decide to not bring our lives into harmony with love. Mm -hmm. Just truth. Mm -hmm. There would be no war. Because we'd understand logically the truth that if I hurt you, then somebody who was hurt by me hurting you is probably going to want to hurt me. Yeah. That's logical. I don't even need to understand love to understand that. Yeah. Right? And yet we don't face that. Because we're so emotional, we just want to, we want to uh, exercise, uh, exorcise our pain by harming someone that you've, you know, that, that's attached to your uh, life because you have harmed me. Mm. Like, so what drove us? Not logic. What's driven us is our own emotional signature of pain and suffering that we're avoiding and therefore our personal truth drove us. Now, I wouldn't call that God's truth because if, if we were in harmony with God's truth, we'd see the absolute truth that if I harm your family or you, someone in your family probably is going to feel at least like harming me. Mm. or someone in my family. Surely that's going to happen. Now, if we do that on a national basis, if, you're, you, know, if you happen to be Iraq and I happen to be USA, <laughs> you know, yeah. if I decide to harm you, Iraq, then someone in Iraq is going to want to finish up harming me, <laughs> USA. Yeah. It makes total logical sense, and yet very few people understand it from a logical perspective or truth-based perspective, let alone an emotional one. And so this is where I see that if we understood truth better, even if we hadn't come to love yet, we, this world that we lived in would be completely different. Yeah. 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 Okay, great. And can I also say that the average person who believes in this whole concept of personal truth is fully willing to justify their own poor behaviour towards others because they don't see it from God's truth's perspective. Mm. So I see this whole concept of personal truth as a very damaging concept on the planet in the sense that it causes huge amounts of pain and suffering because each person is in a different set of personal truths, which are not truths at all, but rather just opinions based upon their own emotional suffering. Yeah, very 